All right. Today we're to, going to talk about the peace of God. The sermon title is The Peace of God. Isaiah 26, 3 is the passage. You will keep him in perfect peace, and her, in perfect peace, whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. You will keep him in perfect peace, her in perfect peace, whose minds are steadfast because they trust in you. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we pray that you would speak to our minds today, help us to fully absorb all that you have for us, and may it permeate within our souls, may it transform our souls, sanctify us, Lord, strengthen us, that we may go forward and be full of light, be full of peace, and your peace, Lord, we're talking about is the one, the kind that transcends all understanding, the only the peace that you can provide for us, we thank you, Lord, for it. In your holy, precious name, we pray. And all God's children say, Amen. 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 So I was looking at a wall. I had a wall, and there were some stairs. And the wall, let's picture this, visualize this to me. The wall had big cracks, big cracks in different areas, and there was holes. And there was some stucco here and there, and it was wearing away. And there was discoloration, and there was things growing out of it. And it was all, it was all messed up. <laughs> and I'm looking at it, and I'm saying to myself, self, you have to change this wall. <laughs> you have to fix this wall. This is your wall. You bought it. So your stairs. You bought it, you and your wife. You have to fix this wall. You have to make it better for the person who's coming. So I said, okay, how do you fix this wall? So I had to call up the persons who were the experts, and I said, you know, how do you, how do you fix this wall? What's the best way to do this? And, you know, what's the best material to buy for this time of year, you know, with the, with the weather the way it is? And this is the kind of material that is on this right now. There's specific material to buy, there's specific tools to buy, and there's a specific way to use the tools. So I said, okay, let's, let's do that. Let's buy all this stuff. And then I bought all the stuff. And then I got to work. So I dug out all of these, like, you know, it was really a mess, right? I dug out all these little pieces where things were growing out of with a shovel, right? Then I used a, uh, some water, a power washer to spray out some areas. So it's completely free of any debris, right? You guys, have anybody, anybody ever do masonry work by any chance? No. Yes, thank you, all right. <laughs> so this is what you do. It's a long, arduous process to do this. It's, it usually takes a lot. Now people who are, who are been doing it for years and years and years are experts, it takes them like a second, you know, it's amazing. You can watch them on YouTube, it's like, oh my gosh, you know? And they have all the perfect materials all the perfect stuff. But sometimes they take a long, it's a long time. So this is my first time doing this, right? And I'm looking at the different bricks and how they have to somehow, they have to now get them to kind of connect back together and these holes in certain spots of the stairs. Structurally, it was very strong, right? But appearance-wise and weather-wise, it was not. It was really bad. So bought this quick creep, creep, quick creep, concrete, and you, just, you have to kind of do it really quick, and it's mold, moldable, right? You can mold it, you can move it, so I molded this one hole, and I, I put a little backing behind it so it's even stronger than it was before, so it even punched it, you know, it was not going to go through, or if you hit it with a hammer, you weren't going to break through it, so I created this whole really good structure behind all the holes, and then I filled it in, then I smoothed it out, and, you know, it took a while. It was, it, it, it was hard at times, you know, it was took patience. At times I wanted to just throw down the, the tools and be like, forget it, you know? But I kept on going. I said, no, no, I'm not gonna let it get me down. I'm not gonna let this, you know, bother me. I kept on going. So eventually I smoothed it out, connected all the different joints, smoothed those out. Then I had a, I realized that, you know what? If I wanna make this really waterproof, I have to go underneath the, the siding and spread the concrete up from there and then stucco this whole thing afterwards. 
and smooth it out. And it has to be on a little bit of a pitch that it's very hard to see. So to keep on checking and making sure it becomes this piece of artwork. So it's a masterpiece. And then you got to figure out afterwards. So I did all that. It was good. I gotta figure out afterwards, how do you make it so, like how, what kind of stucco do you want? Do you want smooth stucco, which is not as strong as rough stucco? And then you want to design on it, right? So they had to do that, they had to do tools for that. So keep on going back to the store, get some more tools, and learn, learn all that, and figure out, oh, I need to acquire this tool. I need to acquire that thing, this substance, that sort of thing, and it should be this way because of the environment that this thing is in, and, and the things that's around it, this looks better to have this like, flower look and rough is better because of the weathering in this area so we had to make it rough so which is like you use this tool to make it rough and so it's, it's what it really is doing is it's allowing for more texture and more uh, surface space which and then it, it just some for some reason that makes it stronger versus smooth it's easier to crack and so we're so we're doing that and then i'm figuring out can make this flower look to it and it makes it look really good someone comes by and they're like wow they're like, that is totally different than what it was before. Holy cow. And they're like, oh my gosh. Like, you know, they're like, they're like I'm actually, I, I enjoy looking at this now. <laughs> I'm like, this is, this is really nice. I'm like, nice. I'm like, there's something missing, though. There's, there needs to be more. It doesn't really blend with the big picture here. We need to have something else that makes it better. I said, you know what? Let's, let's get some white paint, some masonry paint. And it's getting towards the end of the year, right? So, so masonry paint. Let's paint the whole thing and accent this part painted, this part not. You know, so the steps we would walk up were not painted. The sides were it blended in with the house. And it's a shiny white paint. So it really brought out the white part of the house. And it made the house look better. And it's blended all well. And then it was done. And I stood back. And what feeling do you think I had? You can, you can shout it out. What's that? Satisfaction, that's a good one. Pride. Yes, pride, pride, yes. I guess you would say that would be pride too, yes, yes. Proud. proud, yes, proud, definitely. What else too, what else too? Think of a more, uh, you know, well, those are good ones, but think of another one too, anybody? Uh, relief, it was done. Relief, yes, oh my gosh, I was so relieved. <laughs> Praise God, right. relief, proud, pride, right? A satisfaction, right? The word in that I'm thinking of, though, because I watched this whole video on Bible Projects, which we watched during our, during our uh, Bible studies, is they use this to describe a specific word. Do you remember that word was in the Bible Project, in our, in our Bible study? It's the word shalom. It's the word peace. That is the word for peace in the Bible. It's when all the different pieces are in their exact spot where they have to be, and where they're created to be, connected all together, smoothed out, looking beautiful, and it just shines with those kinds of, I guess you would say, uh, secondary effects. It's the center of it is shalom, and out of it comes satisfaction. Out of it comes for the thing that it is, is pride or proud or, and then also relief, right? There's relief, you know, there's, when you look at something that's beautiful and something that's really made well, it, it makes a sense. If there's a euphoric sense that comes with that. Say, oh, wow. Especially if you do it yourself, right? Now, that is the kind of peace that God has for us. And we are his handiwork, the scripture says. We are, actually, Scripture specifically says that we are that temple. We are all parts of the big picture, the big wall, the temple, or the building itself, which was made of stones and giant, giant stones, squared off and done just right and without, actually, it was created without a form of a metal tool. So it's, it's a mystery how they made these, uh, the blocks of the temple and Solomon's day and so on. It's actually a commandment of Moses. So it's this wonderful, amazing thing. But that's us in our lives, too, right? Before we come to Christ, there's these holes that happen to get in there, right? Then there's these things that might grow out of us. Maybe it's bitterness. Maybe it's unforgiveness. You know, maybe it's just a flood that comes down, and every time it comes down, it washes into our situation and makes things difficult for us. 
There's all these things that need to be addressed and brought together in order for us to have that feeling of rest, that feeling of goodness and peace and proud and all of these good feelings, psychological position, I guess you would say, spirit. And that's what God is in the business of doing for us. He's in the business of making that hole that is there to be stronger than it was before, making that, that spot where the hole was stronger than it was before. He's in the business of taking our issues that we went through and making it better for us before he came. I mean, uh, better, than, better for us than it was before we came, before he came, before the whole situation took place. He takes these broken glass, and he creates this wonderful spectacle of light. He takes, he takes our broken down houses and builds them up. God is in the business of making peace. He's the prince of peace. Now, unlike that house, right? We are living beings. We're living beings, aren't we? Everyone say living beings. Living beings. We're living beings. We don't just do exactly everything that the master is doing. Right? I mean, the master at times, the person has to get underneath there, and there are certain spots you have to get into a certain position and do all kinds of crazy things. Jesus did that for us on the cross. And he gets into all of those interesting positions and gets the special tools and the right stuff. He knows what, exactly what it is. But it's difficult. It takes patience. It takes patience. It takes gentleness. And we start to see in our lives how it's God who works what the image of God that we are created in looks like. We are a living being made in the image of God. And he is creating a situation that reflects his glory. And we understand his glory in our lives as he works in our lives. Just like as I worked on the wall, or whatever it may be that you guys work on that you bring peace to in your life. Maybe it's cleaning the house. Maybe it's gardening. Maybe it's financial statements. Maybe it's whatever it's going to be. Maybe it's working on uh, like Roy with the bread truck and doing all that. All kinds of organized things that you're doing, and it makes it it makes this good and this great situation brings peace. God's doing the same thing. I can tell you, without gentleness, I couldn't have done that stuff on the wall the way I did it. I mean, I, I, people everywhere praised me. People, I was at the, uh, at, the, uh, at the party yesterday. People were like, I, I heard you. You're amazing. Like, from the first time you did it, it was outstanding. You know, like, gentleness. You had, to, you had to watch very carefully as you're doing it to be a very steady hand. God treats us that way as well. Amen? Can you reckon, I mean, I don't know about you guys, but I recognize, I look back in my life, I recognize God's gentleness in my life. God seeing this thing and smoothing this thing out. God stretching me in this area. God dropping some concrete in this area, filling this hole, molding me. Right? And at times, I, don't, I didn't want to do that. There was one time on Thanksgiving I was working before we had dinner. I was out there in the rain. It's raining out, and I'm doing that, and I'm focused. I'm staying focused on the whole thing, making sure nothing gets in my way. I'm in the zone, right? Thanksgiving. God spares no expense on our lives. He spared and spares no expense on bringing us peace. But we're living beings. Right? We're living beings. You know, I was working with my kids just recently, and uh, we, were, we were actually at the, at the party, actually at the party, but other, other times throughout the week, Kristen and I, for the last, I think for the last month or so, Kristen and I were saying, like, you know, why aren't these kids listening? Darn it. What the heck happened? All of a sudden, is it the heat? I'm like, what's going on? They're not listening to a single thing we say. So Kristen will be on the phone with me, I'll be somewhere else, and I'm like, I, I hear them, and she's like, no, it's not. 
<laughs> Whatever's gonna happen, right? And same thing for me too. I'm there, and I'm like, I have, you know, I, I get a little bit more like, you know, scariness and power in there, so it'll listen a little bit more. Sometimes, sometimes I listen to her more, so the same thing happened to me, right? So I'm like saying something, they're like, oh yeah, sure, daddy. I'm like, go oh, hit me or something. I'm like, are you out of your mind? Get you back to <laughs> right? Oh, 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 you know, just don't listen sometimes. There's this phenomena all of a sudden happening. My kids used to listen really well. We're at the party and they're with one of their cousins, and I'm like, oh my gosh, look at him listening to that kid. That kid's great. <laughs> I'm like, remember those days? He's older. What happened? What are you guys doing? You know, like, and then uh, our kids are behaving well, too. They're, they're really good kids, too. But they still, at times, it's just like, no, they're not listening. Trying to convey something. <laughs> you know, like, you know what I'm saying? This is why, why can't you pick up what I'm saying? This is for your benefit, you know, like, you know, and, and uh, you know, that kind of stuff. That's us too, though, right? With God? Oh, brother. I can just look at myself sometimes and say to myself, what are you doing? Like, you know, he told you not to do that. <laughs> he told you not to say that thing. Act this way. You said it yourself. You're going to go out there. Next time, you're going to do it this way. And you said you're going to do it. And then you got there. And all of a sudden, would you lose your mind? <laughs> like, everything is lost. Right? And I say that to myself sometimes. And even in saying all that stuff, God is saying, is, 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 is so gracious. He's so gentle. He's so, he's so patient. So accepting. I'm, I'm in his tizzy here. Just like, you know, just picture a child, right? Same thing. And God is there, and he is there like this, the most wonderful father. Embracing us and smoothing us out like the most caring and gentle mother. Right? Working things out, smoothing it out, filling the holes, smoothing the thing out, making it all blend in, making it blend in with the big picture of our life, making it blend in with the big picture of our community, and our family, your lives, image of God, all of us. And so what are we supposed to do then? We're the image of God. We're supposed to mirror God. Everyone say, mirror God. Mirror God. Mirror God. We're supposed to, as he's gentle, we're, okay. So that's why submission in the Bible it's not like submission by force. It's submission to dance, in a sense. Right? Imagine you're dancing with someone. I want to go this way. I want to go that way. Are you kidding me? <laughs> We're going to die. We're going to fall over each other. <laughs> There's, you know, he's the master, right? He's the expert. He's the image. Submission. Yes, Lord. Your word says this. Yes, Lord. Gentle. Be gentle with yourself as he's gentle with you. Patience. Have patience with yourself as he's patient with you. Faith. He has faith in you. Have faith in him back. Amen? Move in that direction. And as you do that, we start to f reflect the image of God. What time have I got, guys? I have no time. This thing goes off. This thing's ridiculous. <laughs> patience, Jeremy. <Jeremy's> patience. <laughs> so... There's a whole bunch of scripture verse I want to point to today. Rejoice in the Lord, Lord, Philippians 4, 46, I think it is. Rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say rejoice. Keep your mind, those who keep their mind in perfect peace. I'm sorry, those who keep their mind on him, he will keep in perfect peace. Whenever we're going through our day, sometimes we don't realize that God is always there working. We are just, just that wall. We're, in a sense, stationary. He is above everything else in our lives. He is above everything. We don't know that he's there working, but literally he is constantly, constantly working in our lives. We refocus our lives on him. We refocus our lives on him. Everyone say refocus. Refocus throughout your day, throughout your night on him. That's what it means when it says pray continually. Refocus on him. Rejoice always. Rejoice. Why are we rejoicing? Because he's there working it out. Because he died for us. Because he has the specific tools. He's the only one who has the specific tools. He's the only one who has this specific material. He creates it. He's the only one. He's the only one. 
He's the only one that knows the exact method for you, and he's the only one that knows the grander, grander, and even grander, 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 grander picture of your, just your simple life in the big, grand scheme of life, which to him is actually really small. You ever think about that? Crazy. Keep our mind on him. Thankfulness. Thankfulness in all situations. Rejoicing always. The Lord is at hand. The Lord is there for us. Amen? That's the kind of things we've got to keep in our hearts. Keep that word in our heart. Remember that perspective. Have that intellectual lens. Know that the Lord is there always smoothing, building, filling. Ask yourself then, what is God doing in this situation? And praise God I'm saved. Praise God I have God in my life. He's doing something now. He's always doing something. Right? Thank God He is. Count your blessings. Count beyond your blessings. Count your punishments. Count your, your the, the, the struggles. Count all of it as joy, James said. Because God is working. You know, sometimes I would hit that wall with a hammer. <laughs> right? Sometimes I feel like God's, you know, <laughs> doing the same thing. But he's working something out. He's making a masterpiece of us, both individually and together as well. Amen? Let's just pray. Let's pray that we, we come back to Christ. We come back in our minds, recognizing what he's doing in our lives that he is the only source of all deliverance, salvation, and healing. And he loves us. It's an unbelievable love. It's divine. It's beyond understanding. Amen? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, help us to be still. <laughs>